Good evening. Tonight we're going to have a very elegant evening, an evening of sophistication here with me and the Burtons. And I'm making a champagne cocktail, Agostura bitters in sugar, a little cognac. And for this particular drink, we're going to add a garnish of a strawberry. So, stay tuned and we're going to explore a really beautiful, elegant, romantic fragrance. A very old one that is modern still today. Stay tuned. So here I am with my uh, wonderful, delicious champagne cocktail. And um, when I think of champagne, I often think of Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton. The first time I ever heard of champagne was, was uh, through them, and that was uh, that they always drank Dom Perignon, which is a very beautiful, expensive, wonderful champagne from France. Um, a little bit about that photograph. Uh, that photograph was gifted to me in 1971 by Elizabeth Taylor. There's a long story behind it that I'll tell you someday, but it does involve an incredible train trip uh, in a very small compartment for two nights with me and the Burtons from Mexicali, Mexico to Guadalajara. It's a very interesting story. I'll tell it to you at another, another time. Hmm. Ah, to the Burtons. Um, so... What are we discussing today? Uh, this classic, this wonderful fragrance is something that is really, really special. It uh, was introduced in 1883 and it changed the world of fragrance forever. It ushered in the modern era of fragrance with the, the discovery of how to isolate for the very first time a molecule, and in this case, the molecule that they isolated was the coumarin molecule from the tonka bean. This was created, as I said, in Paris in 1883, and it uh, is an aromatic fougere. It gave birth to aromatic fougeres with such um, ones as Prada by Prada for men, coming from there, and uh, Brut, the famous Brut by Fabergé, and many, many, many more. It's, it's a very popular masculine fragrance to this day fragrance style. So uh, which one am I talking about? It's none other than the most incredible and beautiful Fougère Royale by the house of Ubigon. And there you have it, Ubigon Paris. This is an incredibly beautiful presentation, a wooden box, highly polished. It was given to me by a friend, a very dear friend, and I wanted to thank him uh, publicly for giving me this incredible gift. Uh, it is just beautiful. So let's open it up and see what's inside. And you open it like this. There we go. And it pops open like that. And there's the incredibly beautiful bottle. So um, it's a wonderful presentation. Let's take it out and take a look at the, at, at the bottle. Now, the nose behind this particular fragrance, which was reintroduced in 2010 by Ubigon Paris, uh, the nose behind it is Rodrigo Flores Rue, and he's also known for such wonderful fragrances as Fleur de Louis by Arquiste, Donna Karen's Gold, and Neroli Portofino by Tom Ford. The top notes are bergamot, chamomile, lavender, and green notes. The mid notes are carnation, geranium, cinnamon, and rose, lilac. And the bottom notes are patchouli, oak moss, um, amber, the Kuraman, which comes from the Tonka Bean and Clary Sage. On a bit of a side note, um, I posted a photograph of this on my Facebook page a couple of days ago, and uh, one person came up on the page and lamented that it didn't smell anything like the original. Now, he evidently has smelled the original, uh, but most of us don't get a chance to. And in a case of reintroducing a fragrance, re 
introducing the idea or the 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 trying to recapture something from the past in this way, you're never ever going to get exactly what it was like. You just simply won't. Um, the plants are different. The, the season, the, the the weather is different. The, the world is different. The, the way it's created is is different, and we're created in a much more modern way today. Um, but it, you're just not going to ever ever get an exact duplicate of what the original was. And for those of us who've never smelled the original, we have this. And why not enjoy it and approach it fresh? And take it for what it is, which is a beautiful, beautiful fragrance. But um, it's in and of itself a new creation. So why don't we just take a look at this incredible bottle. It is really beautiful. Um, uh, it has a crosshatch uh, 3D effect on the front that looks very much like a basket weave. A beautiful silver uh, plate right here that says uh, Fougere Royale and around the top it says Ubigant and it has their logo, or uh, not the logo, but the, the cross hatching again on the top. It is just an incredibly gorgeous bottle. Um, so something else about this perfume that you should know is that um, to celebrate the, the reintroduction of this classic fragrance from the 1800s, it's presented in Eau de Parfum version, which really makes it so spectacular. Now, this fragrance, I would say, most definitely evokes both a classicism and a moder modernity in it. And why I say that is because it just works so well today. It doesn't at all have a feeling of, of old man, as some people like to say, but is quite bright and of the now. Uh, it certainly is something that I can see being being worn by all kinds of um, sophisticated men of the, the Belle Epoque in Paris, or in uh, the 20s and the 1920s in New York, or in Hollywood in the 30s and 40s, and even today. Now, um, let's just spray it on and see what my feeling is about it. I've worn it before many times, but I just want to get a fresh revisit to it. And so, beautiful spray. It opens just green, green and rich, and that chamomile mixed in with, with the um, with the green notes, gives it um, I don't know a kind of hay, but a little bit of dirty kind of hay, um, earthy. Dirty is the wrong word. It has a bit of earthiness in there, and of course the carnation and the geranium uh, come up a little later on and are blended so beautifully with this great cinnamon. There's a touch of rose. I'm not a big rose fan, but the rose does not dominate this fragrance at all. And there's lilac, of course, which kind of gives it um, uh, a, soft, a soft edge in, in the, the mid-notes. Now, uh, it lasts a very long time. It's eau de parfum, as I said. It lasts on my skin for about 12, 12 to 13 hours. It is just so incredibly um, long-lasting. It has a really good sillage. It goes out to about, I would say, about three feet when you first put it on, and then pulls in to about a foot and a half or a foot. Um, the bottom notes that come up later are patchouli, a wonderful oak moss, amber, and the curamin note that is or molecule that comes from the tonka bean, and um, clary sage. And it just has this wonderful kind of slow burn at the end that is just beautiful and it just it just speaks of sophistication and elegance um, and worldliness it definitely has a European feeling it's not it's not it's not a cool water or um, any kind of a fresh kind of um, thing that is very popular today but I think this one is a classic that can be worn by anybody today who has um, a, a yen for something a little more sophisticated than what is going around on the market today. So there we have my take on this incredibly beautiful classic fragrance from the House of Ubigant, Paris, and that is the Fougere Royale. 
So this is Lanier Smith from Sense Memory saying, remember, wear what you love and not what they say you should like. And I'll talk to you later.